Last year, I made an award-winning game called Tax Fraud Simulator for the Hackathon VS Hacks. If you don't know what that is, well then let me tell you. Despite its name, hackathons have nothing to do with hacking. Instead, it's like a game jam of sorts, but for anything programming related. Even though my game was really low quality... What the heck is this game? Is that a fine boom? Somehow, I won an award for audience favorite and got a cool 3 months of Nitro, a Waffle Maker, and Bloons Tower Defense 6. Yeah, don't question it. However, I want to make an actually decent game, so this year, I'm going to redeem myself with the long-awaited sequel, Tax Fraud Simulator 2, Revenge of the IRS. And this time, I've got a partner in crime to help me. The man, the myth, the legend, Kevin. He is my friend and he doesn't know how to code. We've only got 5 days to make this game, so y'all ready to get funky? To get started, we need to decide what Tax Fraud Simulator 2 is going to be about. Well, other than tax fraud, of course. After some brainstorming, as in we started speaking out the dumbest ideas we could think of in class, we decided that the game's story would be a continuation from the first game, with the premise being that after years of committing tax fraud, the IRS decides to take the revenge by attempting to kill you. Thus, the name of the game. You'll have to defend off ways of IRS agents while using your tax fraud money to buy weapons and upgrades. By the way, VS Hacks will now be pronounced V Shacks from now on because it's funnier that way and everyone collectively agreed on this name, including the organizers. Is it canonical that it's pronounced V Shacks? Uh, yes. Yes, it's V Shacks. You're out of there. Anyways, V Shacks is going to happen from June 23rd to June 27th, with the winners being announced on the following day. With this extremely small time frame, we didn't make sure that we actually finished the game before the deadline. To help, we made a Trello board to plan and track our progress on the game. Haha, <laughs> it's not like any other game dev YouTuber has done this before. Once that was done, I decided that we needed to scout our competition. In the VShacks Discord server, there's a channel for introductions, and looking at it, we can see that the other participants have quite a bit of experience under their belt. A lot of them already have put in multiple years of coding in different languages, and have expertise in many fields. The competition is looking a bit scary, and to add salt to the wound, my friend who got second place in last year's VShacks is also participating, and he says his team is going to build a bubble tea machine. He also has someone called Hayden on his team, a genius prodigy who won a chemistry and physics scholarship, got 102% on AP Physics C, and also does robotics and electronics as a hobby in his free time. We're doomed! How will we ever compete against a bubble tea machine? Oh yeah, I guess there's also the Hayden guy we have to worry about. So, me and Kevin just have to hope that Tax Fraud Simulator 2 will wow the judges enough for us to win. But all we can do now is wait until the hackathon starts. The hackathon started off with an opening ceremony at 4.30pm. They explained some basic stuff and afterwards I got into a VC with Kevin. Alright Kevin, we gotta, we gotta get to work, right? Uh, but actually, uh, first, uh, can you introduce yourself? You have five seconds. Oh, my name is Kevin. Uh, four, three, two, one. Zero, all right, time's out. Let's start shocking. Let's start shocking. Me and Kevin decided that we should split the work between the both of us by having me do all the programming and Kevin do all the art, since he doesn't really know how to code. We also made the decision to use the game engine Scratch. It's very easy to use and it's what I have the most experience with. Despite its infamous status of mostly being made for kids, it can still be very powerful in its own right, but has quite a lot of limitations. To get started, we made a simple character controller and an armed cat with a 9mm pistol. Next, we needed some enemies for a player to take out their anger on, so we made a simple enemy spawner and created the first enemy. Andrew Tate, perfect for target practice! Is that Andrew Tate? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin drew a pistol on the character model, which, uh, kinda looks like a terrorist. I think the bulletproof vest and magazines have to go, though. I think yeah, that's a bit too much. Yeah, they're gone. That, look, that makes him look too much of, like, a terrorist or something. I think it'll look <laughs> Yeah, good. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's also got Bob, because, well, there actually is no reason. He just got Bob. But anyways, Kevin removed Bob's bulletproof vest in an attempt to make him look less like a terrorist, and, uh, he still looks like a terrorist. Well, no time to worry about that. Let's move on. So next was to just add some basic movement, and somehow this proved to be incredibly difficult. Crash is kind of dumb, and those aforementioned limitations were restricting our movement to just this area only. You'd think we'd be able to just simply move our camera to follow the player off screen, but the problem is, there is no camera! You are literally restricted to this space only, which is not a lot, by the way. So I had to pull some shenanigans to bypass this, which is just a massive pain in the ass. Like, you would not believe. But essentially, instead of actually moving Bob around, the background, the enemies, and every single projectile moves instead to give the illusion of Bob moving around a map, when in reality, he's stuck in the middle of the screen. After struggling with that for a while, Kevin drew an AK-47, and I added that to the game, and, uh... Where's my gun? Oh, Kevin, <laughs> so I, I found a problem. Kind of large I also implemented money on kill, added a placeholder shooting sound effect. <laughs> Oh my god. There's a placeholder! There's a placeholder, right? We'll use it. 
the entire way through. No! And then old Kevin, for fun. I made the grid. The, the gritty? The gu- The gu- The gu- I'm not working the gu- gu- And with that, me and Kevin had worked for like a casual eight hours straight, and we decided to go to sleep since it was like 1am. So we went to bed with dreams of tax evasion and a man named Bob shooting IRS agents. We immediately got back to work the next day, and we were just pumping out game mechanics left and right. I started off by adding an actual proper sound effect this time for shooting, and then told Kevin that Bob looked like a drug dealer. Okay, I feel like our, our main character still do, looks too much like a, like a drug dealer or something. What do you want to wear then? Like a dress shirt? <laughs> a tuxedo? Eventually, Kevin came out with this, and hopefully this won't get us banned from scratch, and he also drew an IRS agent as our first real enemy. <laughs> <laughs> So I fixed the IRS agents so they no longer look like giants and look perfect now. Okay, don't you hate it when this happens to you? <laughs> Yo! Yo! Oh my god, what is he doing, Kevin? What is he doing to me? <laughs> Kevin, help! Okay, so I had to make it so that they stopped doing... Uh, uh, and after, it was time to move on to making the map. Me and Kevin went back and forth for a while debating on where enemies should spawn, what the map layout should be, and what it should even look like. We had some wild ideas, but due to many, many technical limitations of Scratch, we once again had to compromise and just go with this flat green field that has a shop in the middle, and the enemies would just spawn beyond the edges of your screen. Look, I know it's a bit disappointing, but I am no coding mastermind, so this is what we had to come up with, and it's basically just a placeholder for now. Now every wave-based survival shooter kind of needs waves, so I coded in a really simple one that increments by one when you kill all the enemies, and it spawns a new wave in. I also flashed the wave number on screen every time a new wave begun to notify the player and oh man it was tempting to not use the vine boom again for this. The wave system also allows me to program in custom waves that are also semi-random to keep the waves feeling unique and past a certain wave the number of enemies and their HP starts to scale so it constantly increases the difficulty so it's actually possible for a player to lose. We also needed some more guns so we decided to add a double barrel shotgun and a Mac 10. Kevin drew the double barrel shotgun but I wanted to prove that I could also do some decent art so I made the Mac 10 myself. Let's see this, let's see this, let's see this. Oh, that's crazy, yo! Okay, maybe I'm not destined to be an artist, and Kevin drew an actual Mac 10, and it's suppressed! Ooh, how cool! Now, not only do we need variety in guns, but we also need some variety in enemies. So we added a big shirtless man that'll act as a tanky enemy, and a ranged enemy with a taser that stuns you for a bit, and, uh, also apparently leaks your exact coordinates. To fight off all these new enemies, we added the ultimate final gun to Bob's arsenal, the NTW-20, 31 kilograms of pure bolt action, armor-piercing fun. Me and Kevin were extremely happy with how this gun turned out, it honestly just looks sick, and the high-tech laser trail it shoots out is awesome. Being a sniper, it obviously does the most damage out of all the guns, but also pierces enemies, making it the ideal weapon for late game. And with three new guns and two new enemies added, we ended off the second day of the hackathon, at 4am no less. Wow, I am so tired. Most of the third day was dedicated to setting up the shop, which required a bunch of time. Kevin drew up the shop screen and individual art for every single shop item while I started to code in the functionality of the shop. As small as this shop screen is, there's a lot of work to be done. We decided on 6 upgrades which just improved the stats to make it easier to code in, and 6 tacticals you can use in the heat of battle. These were also kept relatively simple as well. After the shop was in working order, we moved on to some of the smaller but still very important details such as adding walking animations, some more sound effects, and an actual main menu. We also made some gun animations, and for Kevin's sanity, most of the guns just have a frame or two of muzzle flash, with the exception of the sniper that has seven beautiful frames of handcrafted animation. It's just chef kisses. Kevin did an incredible job here. Now you might be asking why aren't there any reloading animations? Or why isn't there even an ammo counter to begin in the first place? Did I just forget to add it? Well it's actually a genius decision that we made so that we didn't have to make any lengthy reload animations, as it seemed that reloading wasn't a necessary mechanic for our game. I mean Doom got rid of it with the exception of the double barrel shotgun, which we also decided to add in our game so you have to reload after firing two shells, which is what is supposed to happen but my shoddy code somehow turns it into a triple barrel shotgun half the time, and I honestly couldn't even find the reason why it does that so I'm just gonna ignore it. The game was starting to actually look quite good now, but there are still quite a lot of things to do. So of course, the next thing we obviously should have done was to spend three hours on making an animated intro sequence for the game that is basically a one-to-one -one copy of the intro sequence from Pizza Tower, but honestly, it's pretty cool and was totally worth the effort. However, we had basically worked for like 10 hours straight that day, so we had to go to sleep once again. Unfortunately, this day I had to go to school first. I know, right? Education is so lame. Boo! But afterwards, we got right back to work. Time was running out and we only had one and a half days to finish the game. 
This means that we unfortunately had to start scrapping some ideas such as a final boss and a new weapon we were thinking of adding. We eventually narrowed down what we had to do to get the game finished to adding one more ranged enemy, coding in all the upgrades and all the tacticals, adding in the rest of the sound effects and some music, making a custom font for the UI, making a new map because this one kinda sucks, and adding a tutorial. And on top of all of this, we have to create a submission video. The organizers hosted a workshop on how to make one of them, and they provided a four-step plan on how to make a submission video. While most sensible people would follow this formula and make a pretty decent video, it's also BORING! Instead, I'm gonna make a high-octane trailer that will be unforgettable for anyone who watches it. But we kinda need to finish the game first, so let's just put that aside for now. Starting off on checklist, we need to add one more ranged enemy to top off our unique cast of IRS agents. Now, not only can you experience some S-tier police brutality and get tasered with about 400,000 volts of electricity, but you can also get blasted by 10 soldiers wielding M16s. They're kinda stupid though, since if you just stand still below them, they miss all their shots. This is definitely an intended feature and not a result of my bad coding skills. Now that that's done, we can move on to coding all of the upgrades and tacticals. Oh, fun! So for my sanity, I decided to skip that and only code in the upgrades for now, which includes speed, damage, max HP, health regen, money on kill, or fire rate. And they all have funny art and descriptions that Kevin made. Once that was done, we made this custom cartoony style font for your health and money, and also created a short tutorial, which is just these three panels that'll hopefully teach the players the basics of the game. I mean, it's not exactly the most complex game anyways. Kevin also replaced our old, boring map with this new, much more cooler map, and since none of us know how to compose music, he also chose out a few songs from some other games to put into ours, and with that, our checklist was more than halfway done. Unfortunately, we still had school the next day, so we had to sleep earlier than usual, and we would have to finish the rest of the game on the last day. I woke up at 8am with only 16 hours until the deadline at midnight. Unfortunately, 5 of these hours got automatically taken up by me having to attend school. Now you might notice that 8am plus 5 hours is only 1pm, while school usually is supposed to go to 3pm. However, we had hit a stroke of luck today, since it was actually the last day of school and there was a barbecue at noon, so everybody had early dismissal. So I quickly rushed down to the cafeteria, snatched a hamburger and ran home. Once I got back home, I immediately got to work. Time was counting down, so we gotta hurry up! First course of action was a submission video, and after a few hours, this is what I came up with. Y'all ready to get funky? That was only a part of it, so if you want to watch the whole thing, it's in the description. Our work is not done though, so after I finished the trailer, I implemented the six tacticals, so now Bob can spill glue, I swear it's glue nothing else, onto the floor to slow down his enemies and drop some spikes onto the floor which are kind of overpowered because they almost insta-kill any cops that run over them. But the downside is that it lasts for a really short time. There's also some vitamins that quickly heal the full health, a stem shot that increases your speed for a short duration, high powered rounds that double your damage for a bit, and a strange device found in the depths of goodwill that gives you the power to essentially do a full screen clear if used right. And now we basically have the bulk of the game done, only thing left to do was to add some sound effects and visual effects to polish up the game. Kevin said he wanted to voice the sound effects for Bob when he takes damage, so let's see what he came up with. Ouch! Okay. Huh. Alright, that's good. Owie! Mm-hmm. Okay. Please stop hitting my ribcage with a metal bar! Oh, uh, alright then, Kevin. Okay, now let's see what the last one is. <laughs> oh my god, my ears! After receiving extensive hearing damage, I added some sound effects and some simple animations for the tacticals and the IRS agents. And that was pretty much the entire game done. All we had to do was to do some final touch-ups and submit the game. And by final touch-ups, I mean I gave it to some people at the playtest, and they found a massive game-breaking bug that I had no idea how to fix. But from the heavens came down Peter, who single-handedly identified the issue and helped me fix it. So thanks man, you're really cool. And with that, after an average of 10 exhausting hours of work per day for 5 days straight, the hackathon came to a close. All we had to do now was wait until the closing ceremony to see how we did. The first place winner this year for VShax 2023 goes to Tax Fraud Simulator 2. Let's go!
go yeah, we did it. We did we it. Won. Yeah, so we managed to get first place and we won a cool $200 in the form of a 100 Amazon gift card for both me and Kevin. We're extremely happy about this outcome, but I mean a game called Tax Fraud Simulator 2 obviously deserves nothing less than first place. If you want to play the game, there will be a link in the description. It's free and only playable on PC. And you can also watch the trailer here. And that's all. Like and subscribe or whatever. Bye bye